Glad that everyone have called in to our Rima Power Hour, which is the Bible study of the Rima Faith Ministries International, where God is glorified, the church is edified, and the world is evangelized. If this is your first time calling in or tuning in, my name is Dr. Brian E. W. Credit, the pastor and founder of Rima Faith Ministries International. Uh, we uh, started out internationally, uh, where we have went over into the uh, Philippines, General Santos uh, area, which is south of Manila. Uh, there we was led of God to do miracle crusades. Uh, people were healed, delivered, people were saved. Uh, the gospel was preached with, with the power of God. And also here in uh, St. Louis, um, we hold worship services at uh, 59, at uh, 1164 North Kings Highway, St. Louis, Missouri, 63133. And I invite each and every one of you all to come out and worship with us. Um, there we get the preach word of God. So on tonight, we get the talk word of God. We're looking at the exposition of the uh, the book of Revelation. Uh, we're on week 24. And um, we're on week 24. And we have reached um, a chapter 4. We have reached chapter 4. Uh, in our studies. And so I'm going to ask everyone to uh, turn to Revelation chapter 4. And there are 11 verses in this chapter. Uh, so uh, for the sake of reading, uh, for the sake of keeping everything within this context, we're going to read uh, the 11 verses of this particular chapter. And then we're going to uh, give a review of sort of when we have of what we have discussed on last week father god we just come in the name of jesus we uh, thank you we praise you we magnify your holy name father you are so kind and so righteous father we just come in the name of jesus we know you have wisdom knowledge understanding uh, of thy word we ask that you grant us thy wisdom some wisdom and knowledge and understanding of thy word as we study this prophetic book of Revelation. And Father, uh, we ask for a thorough understanding that we may apply it, that we may be watchful, that we may uh, share it with, with others uh, in our lives as we go along our daily activities about uh, your son's second coming and also upon your wrath that shall be uh, poured out upon all of the earth. For Father, we forever give you the praise, honor, and the glory in the mighty and the majestic name of Jesus. So turn with me, uh, if you will, to Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. And uh, we're going to start at verse 1. And we're going to read down uh, to verse 11, which will conclude this whole chapter. Revelation chapter 4 and we are going to start at verse 1 and it reads after this I looked and behold a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard was as it were a trumpet talking with me which said come hither come up hither and I and I will show thee show thee things which must come hereafter and immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sodden stone and there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. Verse 4, And round about the throne were four and, were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty-four elders 
twenty elders uh, sitting clothed in the right raiment, raiment, and they held and they held on their heads, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceed lightnings and thunders and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning upon before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea, which there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne, and round about the throne were four beasts, full of eyes, before and behind. And the four beasts was like was like a lion and a and like and the second like the, a calf and the third had a face as a man and a fourth a beast like a, a flying eagle and the four and the four beasts uh, had each of them six wings around and about 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 him and they were full of eyes uh, within and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts uh, give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty-four elders uh, fell down upon him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns uh, before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy to receive glory and honor and power, and for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So said the word of God, the fourth chapter of the book of Revelation, those who have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. So on tonight, uh, just on a review of what we have uh, studied on so far, I believe on last week we uh, ended up uh, talking about the uh, four beasts that were also at uh, the throne. So this, this second uh, vision, the Revelation chapter 4, uh, starts the second vision. The second vision that was included in this one revelation. So we have discovered upon our introductory studies uh, that uh, revelation is 15 visions. It has 15 visions but one revelation. So then also um, within this revelation we learned about uh, with the symbolicness, uh, the symbolic words uh, that John was using that key words to to, to give that he was talking about uh, some symbolic gesture when we saw words like as like or like a. So uh, upon upon that note that um, the, the Apostle John was uh, describing this heavenly scene uh, that he was uh, given to or seen by God uh, when he had this out of body experience as it relates in verse 2 uh, said that uh, how he was immediately in the spirit. And so uh, he was trying to describe this divine glory presence of God and this place of that we call heaven where God is that he was trying to describe this majestic atmosphere, this uh, uh, awesomeness uh, experience he was having with earthly words. So he was trying his very best to relate what he was saying with earthly words. So it is as like that anytime we experience or see some things uh, uh, rather divine or some uh, experience that we have that was very ecstatic in our lives that we try our very best to describe our experience the best way we could. So that's the way it was with, with the, the Apostle John that he was trying to uh, explain or describe the very things he was seeing using the best earthly words he possibly could. 
as it relates as he talking about the glory of God or the, the description of God, if you will, how he is set on the throne and the, the how his glory reflect the it was upon was like a jasper or sodden stone and how there uh, uh he described the uh four elders uh, the 24 elders uh, that was uh at the throne as it relates to or deals with how uh the 24 elders uh could be representative of uh, one the twelve patriarchs, uh, which we know who those uh, those are, as dealing with uh, the uh, twelve tribes of Israel, those patriarchs, to where it gave birth to the twelve tribes, and then also the twelve foundational apostles. So we got twenty four elders. So it gives the, the collectiveness of the the body of Christ or the collectiveness of the. Uh, believers uh, of God of Christ, or uh, rather their Old Testament, or rather their New Testament, it gives the, their representative of the uh, uh, the fulfillment to, if you will, of the Abrahamic covenant, to where it said that he shall be father uh, of many uh, great nations, and then also that with um, within this context, we have both the Old Testament and New Testament, so therefore we have the collectiveness of those who were believers in God and Christ. And rather, uh, uh, no matter what the person, person uh, ethnic background may have been, if they was a believer in Christ, yes, they are, or we are all part of the body of Christ. So we have the 24 elders, uh, 12 if you will, would represent it, the, uh, the uh, patriarchs of the Old Testament, and then also you have the twelve that represented the foundational apostles, which un introduced Christianity or introduced the kingdom of God and the gospel of Christ to all those, rather, Jews or Gentiles. So then we also uh, looked at how that there were... Um, the thrones, uh, the thrones of God, to where there was lightnings and thunderings that came out of the throne of God, and we looked at some related scriptures as it relates to that, and we looked at Exodus chapter 19 and verse 16. Then we also we looked at Exodus uh, chapter 20 and verse 18 to where the voice. And the, and the multitude and the thundering and the lightning and the, the cloud, if you will, was around the mount uh, as Moses Moses was getting the um, the uh, law or the Ten Commandments, if you will, before they have entered into the promised land. And the voice and the presence of God at that particular time was so awesome till it brought about a terrible fear into the life, if you will, of the Hebrews of that time to where they dare not to uh, question at that particular point, dare not to question the origin and the authenticity and the self-existence of God. So they asked that Moses would speak to them rather than God himself. Because, uh, as you said, as dealing with the voice of God, as the authoritative voice of God, as relates to with uh, the thundering, the, the, the sound of thunder, or, if you will, the, the sound of the, the deep bass of a waterfall or something of that sort. And then also you have, if you will, the small, still voice of God that speaks to our very inner being, whereas the authoritative voice of God can speak to our external being, or our, uh, we hear him through our external ears. So uh, the lightning and, th and thundering, the, uh, thundering as, as it relates, as it comes from God, dealing with the, the majesty and the glory of God, the manifestation, if you will, of His very presence. So His presence, He was one that was sitting on the throne and and uh, proceeding out the thunder and lightning, and there were also uh, seven lamps of burning fire before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. 
and we looked at that as relates to um, um, the Holy Spirit and the uh, the attributes, if you will, of the Holy Spirit as it relates to Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. So when you get time, uh, also turn to uh, look at those uh, seven attributes, if you will, in Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. Two. So they had a continuous uh, presence of uh, the burning fire. Uh, they had the seven spirits of God, um, or the or the, or the seven spirits of God, the Holy Spirit uh, operation. And we know too, in in God's arithmetic, that the number seven uh, represent completeness or wholeness. So then, uh, 11 and 2, uh, Isaiah chapter 11 and 2, you'll find that there is, uh, you find the uh, seven spirits or attributes, if you will. You have the spirit of the Lord. You have wisdom. You have understanding, counseling. You have uh, uh, might. You have knowledge. And then you have the fear of the Lord. You can find those as uh, as I mentioned uh, in Isaiah chapter eleven verses one and two. So then uh, we have here that we have a uh, verse six where it says, "And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal." And in the midst of the throne and round about the thrones were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. So this is uh, pretty much where we had left off on last week as it relates to the four beasts or these uh, four, if you will, uh, cherubims or, or excuse me, or seraphims as we will look. Because every class of angels, if you will, had a particular duty that they had to perform or they had to do in heaven. So seraphims, basically they are orchestrated uh, worship around the throne of God. And then you have the cherubims, uh, which were four wings. Uh, the seraphims had six wings, but the cherubims were um, well, well, some... Um, uh, angelic beings, uh, um, uh, they were uh, living creatures as recorded in uh, Ezekiel chapter 1, and they were powerful and awesome and authoritative, if you will, in their being. Because you remember, if you uh, research uh, the Ark of the Covenant and that um, the Ark of God in the Old Testament, you will see on the mercy seat that would resemble, if you will, the presence of God. And then on each end of the mercy seat was cherubims, cherubim angels, um, as it was um, recorded in the Old Testament. But here we have the, the seraphims as denoted by the six wings. So then it said, uh, you have the sea of glass like unto crystal, the endless endless if you will the glass or the crystal if you will this this uh, transparent uh, sea that was uh, before the throne of God and then uh, you have around about the throne were four beasts uh, full of eyes uh, before and behind so you have the four beasts and then again, then John gives the description, if you will, of those four beasts. You got four beasts, uh, verse 7. The first beast was, was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf. And uh, the third beast uh, had the face of a man. And the fourth beast was like a, was like a flying eagle. And then let's look at verse 8. And it said, And the four beasts had each of them six wings round and about, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, 
which was and is and is to come. So you have these angelic beings. You have the four beasts that has six wings. One uh, had a, the face of a lion. One had the face of a cow. One had the face of a man. And one was had a face uh, like that of a flying eagle. And, 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 and two, these were uh, giving us like the description, if you will, of those that was in Ezekiel. In Ezekiel um, chapter 1. Ezekiel and uh, Ezekiel uh, chapter 1. But there was some differences, if you will, as relates to these um, particular living creatures. Whereas uh, in Revelation, for one case it says that they had um, that the four, four, the four beasts was the four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Whereas in Ezekiel, the wheels was full of eyes, and and uh, they had the, the same uh, uh, same um, some of the similarities, some other similarities as it relates to Ezekiel four, but now uh, Ezekiel one. But Ezekiel 1, those, if you will, those uh, living creatures were cherubims, whereas these here in Revelation are seraphims. And seraphims and, and, and angelic beings or angels, they orchestrated worship around the throne of God. They orchestrated worship around the throne. You remember Isaiah chapter 6? Let's, let's go to Isaiah chapter 6, and we can look at that real quickly. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1 and it reads and it says in the year that King Uzziah died I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and his train filled the temple the glory of God his train filled the temple and it stood and above it stood seraphims each one has six wings as we go look at Revelation those seraphims or those angelic beings or those of uh, uh, um, four beasts that had six wings. And twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet. <coughs> he covered his feet, and with uh, twain he did fly. So two wings he's, he covered, uh, he flew with, uh, two wings he covered his face. And two wings he covered his feet. And one cried unto the other and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Uh, the earth, the whole earth is full of his glory. And the post, verse 4, Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 4. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And then, in verse 6, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 6, and it says, Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which uh, he did, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar, and he laid it upon my mouth, and said, Lo, this had touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. So that that's dealing with one of the uh, one of the duties, if you will, of the seraphims. One is that. They worship God around the throne, and then two, then two, they also 
bring about purging or cleansing and even judgment as we look in the book of Revelation. So let's go back to the book of Revelation. So we're looking at the uh, book of Revelation, uh, chapter 4, and talking about these four beasts uh, as it relates to those, uh, for them who were around the throne. So, it's as they have seen, uh, um, got the four beasts as they uh, will relate to being uh, around the throne of God. And we will give the picture as if the, that these four beasts, uh, as Revelation said, before and behind, that you have some uh, two before, two behind, or one on each side of the throne north, south, east, and west. So then, uh, the beast, uh, the lion, the calf, the the face, and the, the flying eagle um, gives the, the impression as the uh, the lion having dominion or authority or as uh, authoritative government, uh, the, the ox as it relates to firmness and endurance and strength, uh, the, the stability, if you will, of an ox. You have the uh, the man, if you will, as dealing with in, uh, intelligence, which is distinguished from all other creatures that were made because we know that man was created. Then we have the, the op also the operation of God. The, the eagle uh, deals with the... Uh, uh, rapidness and power, if you will, and bringing about the uh, rapidness of the command or execution of God. So then you have these creations or these uh, creatures or these angelic beings around the throne. Uh, you have these seraphims around the throne and they bring about, if you will, uh, worship up to God. So then you have you have some who who distinguish, if you will, that the four beasts, as relates to these images that the the, the apostle has seen, that some had denoted to be um, the lion, as dealing with the lion of the tribe of Judah. So as relates with Matthew, for whom have Basically, his writing was to the Jews, and then you have the mark uh, or uh, the ox, which some distinguished to be the mark, uh, the book of Mark or the Gospel of Mark, as Christ has been a servant, and then you have man, the face of a man, as as it relates to Luke, as being the son of man and uh, humanity, and also like with the gospel, the eagle as it relates to the Gospel of John and the deity of Christ. So and so with that aside, you, you still have the seraphims that has uh, six wings and uh, two as, as like the ones that was in Isaiah chapter 6, two cover their face, um, two cover their feet, and then two wings, they flew. They hovered, if you will, around the throne. So the question is, while they were around the throne, the next, the next verse, if you will, verse eight, give us what their purpose and their duty was around the throne. And so, as they, uh, verse eight says that at the four beasts, which the four beasts had each of them uh, six wings about him. And they were full of eyes, 
uh, within, and they rested not not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was, which is, and which is to come. So these these uh, 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 live the beast that was around the throne, their wings, if you will, were full of eyes. You see, and they had wings running about them, and they were full of eyes. The 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 nooks, the the uh, the um omniscient, the all-knowing, all-seeing God, if you will. So they are around the throne of God. They hovering, if you will, around His throne and they are worshiping the one, the very one on the throne, which was God. So, just like these here, these four beasts, they said they worship God, they praise and worship God as with the seraphims that was in Isaiah chapter 6. So they said the same words here, uh, primarily here they say, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which is and is and is to come, which was and is and is to come. So they, they worship God day and night, if you will. If there was, there is no night in heaven. But what the, the apostle is trying to convey here is that um, uh, uh, the, 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 the angels worship God endlessly, cis, uh, ceaselessly. They worship God endless. They continually around his throne worshiping God. So what is that saying for us is that upon our every moment and upon our every being, every opportunity that we have, we should give God praise and we ought to worship him. And the devoutness of our very essence of our being would uh, worship God for who he is. To observe the wording, say, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Holy is His presence. God is holy. And He is an Almighty God. And when we worship God, when we praise God, that we praise Him for who He is, and for we thank Him and worship Him for what He has done. Oh, you hear me? When we praise God, we have to open our mouths to tell Him how awesome He is. And in the form of worship, really in, in worship, we're expressing the very essence of our hearts unto God. Some people in their worship, worship uh, mannerism, some just have raised their holy hands, some cry and expressing their very beings unto God. So, uh, so he said, holy, 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 uh, the holy, 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 uh, Lord God um, Almighty, which was, which deal with the pre past, and is, which deal with the present, and is to come, which deal with the future, which saying that God always has existed and will exist and he is existing in our very present during this January 1st uh, January 17th 2018 God is here but the question is where is your disposition where is your mind where is your heart is, excuse me is your very heart is to worship God Worship the very essence of God. They say, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And look at verse 9. It said, And when those beasts gave glory and honor. And thanks to him that sat on the throne who lived forever and ever. Then, of course, got a comma there after the uh, verse in verse 9. So they, they worship him uh, and give him praise and glory and honor 
and it's endlessly and like and, and as we state in all that we do we give God uh, his praise and his honor and we shouldn't have to if you will wait till we get to church on Sunday morning or when we get to our local church to give God praise or to worship him we can worship him in a very press in our very home where it could just be you and God us and God so give him glory and honor and thanks unto him and because of these seraphims worshiping and praising God at the throne look at what the 24 elders did when they saw if you will the the uh, seraphims worshiping God So it's here, it says here in verse 10 it says here in verse 10 it says the, the four and 24 elders let me back up and when those beasts gave glory I'm going to back up to verse 9 so we read this in context and when those beasts gave glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the twenty-four elders fall down and fall down before him that sat on the throne and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying. So so not only did they did their posture uh, fall down in prostrate position and worship God the very ones that was sitting on the very one that was sitting on the throne but they gave him gifts what he did they the 24 elders they had their crowns they took off their crowns and put it in the presence of God their offering unto God yet in this heavenly place in this heavenly vision these 24 elders has the precious crowns and they put uh, they cast their crowns before God as the gift as an offering so question question nowadays nowadays uh, before I impose a question on you that why uh, that we have so many people that uh, nowadays they worship God or to praise God to see what they could get from him they worship and praise God on condition. The question is, question is, uh, people, can you worship God, can you praise God for who He is without the expectation of receiving something? But I tell you on tonight that uh, upon the expression yet in our uh, text that when we come to worship and praise God, we should come before His throne, not empty-handed, but with the with a gift in our hands, and that gift would be our praise and our worship and our very being. What do you give to God upon your worship? Are you uh, are you there to receive, or are you there to give? When we go to when we do go to our local churches uh, for for worship or whatnot, we should go there to give and not so much receive. And when we give to God, then He will He is subject to uh, uh, bless us um, to receive. So we go there to worship God. We give Him our gifts. We give Him the crown. Of of our the essence of our being can you not can we not if you will worship God without distractions as we see so much with social media if you will um, people on their phones people uh, um, uh, uh, blogging if you will when we are in our worship God requires our undivided attention how can we then therefore give God our whole being and worship him for who he is 
and we steadily got our cameras rolling. And surely uh, in some places and uh, some ministries, uh, that is the, um, the duty of some uh, who have the professional cameras that they may stream live, they may uh, stream live, if you will, on different sites. But our general essence, the general business of the congregation uh, shall come and to worship and to praise God and to give Him our very essence, our crown that we should throw before or put before the throne of God. Our lives, our hearts, our ver the very essence of our being is the crown of, that God desired His gifts to be. So then uh, they, they were saying they not only can cast their crowns before the throne, but then they utterly uh, praised God and said, Thou art worthy. Now don't we think that God is worthy of the crown of the essence of our being? Can we not worship Him because He is worthy of our time a couple of hours, if you will, Sunday, a Sunday, and to and if the truth be known, people that worship and praise is a lifestyle, is a lifestyle, and and the 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 elders uh, got before the throne and said, "Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power." Is God receptive of your praise and worship? Are you worshiping God from the very essence of your heart? That God will uh, receive uh, the glory and honor and the power that, uh, that it has been expressed to Him? Or, or some... Uh, putting on a form of godliness, if you will, and they praise and worship God, so they as with the Pharisees, do it for show or doing it so they could get a pat on the back, as Jesus told um, the Pharisees, so that uh, when they uh, uh, fast and pray and they uh, they worship God for show, that they uh, surely had received their rewards here on earth looking for a pat on the back. So, so digress and regress and reevaluate. Why are you going to church? Are you going there to really to worship, to express your heart and your well-being, your very essence of thy being unto God or unto Christ? Rather it's the choir singing, rather it's through the preached word, or, or and, and, and when you go there with a mindset, and we will have to go to our local churches with the mindset that our mind is clear, and we come to utterly give ourselves unto God, because He is worthy to receive the glory, honor, and the power. For thou hast created all things. So they, they praise in him. They 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 pray their praise is purposefulness. Purpose. Purposeful. Their praise is purposeful. Look what he said. They praise in God for a reason. Said thou hast created all things. And for thy pleasure they are and were created. So they didn't, they didn't just go before the throne of God just to be gone before the throne of God. They went there for a purpose and they went to the God and they praised Him for what He has done. All of creation. Is there a purpose in your praise? And is that, pur is that purpose is the sole purpose to acknowledge God for who He is and what He has done? Purposeful praise. So they came and they said that thou art created, thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure. They are and were 
created. What is your praise? What is your story, if you will, for praising God? Oh, you hear me? Purposeful praise. Pers purposeful worship. It's not haphazardly. It's not a ritual. It's not something that you just do. But you do it in the essence of our very hearts. So we looked at chapter 4, uh, which is uh, the start of the, uh, the second vision, uh, which covers uh, verses 4 through uh, chapter 4 through chapter 6. We looked at the angels, the seraphims that orchestrated uh, worship and their very beings, and also that caused and induced, if you will, the 24 elders to bow down and to cast their, their uh, crowns uh, before the throne and to worship God for who he is. The, uh, uh, the uh, uh, doxology, uh, the doxological uh, expression uh, of these beings, uh, uh, the 24 elders and the seraphim, they have purposeful praise to the very one that was sitting on the throne. And John tried his very best, if you will, to describe the glory of God sitting on that throne. So that is uh, chapter 4. So we're going to look at uh, chapter 5. We're going to look at the... Let's go to chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5. So dealing with Revelation chapter 5 that um, this dealing with the one who is worthy, if you will, to open up the seals. To open up the seals. And you know, I had a, I got a really good friend, a pastor friend or my pastor, if you will, that can uh, Work this chapter five. I never seen nobody preach it like like he preached it uh, years ago. We used to, uh, there were uh, approximately um, thirteen of us ministers that came under um, uh, our late pastor, Dr. Ron L. C. Bridewell, and uh, seven of us. There's uh, some of us uh, with some other ministers. They are pastoring now. That we used to travel the city. And people used to request, if you will, that we would come and uh, preach on the seven seals. <clears throat> but my good friend, uh, uh, when he did uh, chapter uh, five, uh, I mean, it was just an awesome presentation of the pre inspirational word of the gospel preached through chapter five. So, chapter five uh, uh, is the uh, bringing about dealing with the seven scrolls or the seven seals and we're going to look at the seven seals and basically what a seal is is a stamp uh, or a seal that they, they have been placed upon the scrolls is uh, rather it was a king uh, a king will uh, put on scrolls or a decree and uh, and upon a seal it cannot be open unless the uh, the king gave it authority. Now, when I was in Korea, I kind of like have a seal here or a stamp, a seal stamp that was given unto me that basically has my name and initials. And in Korea, this can be authorized as a uh, uh, what word I'm looking for. Uh, this can be authorized as a authentic signature because it got a stamp with your name and my name is written in Korean and put on a stamp on any document. So uh, upon these seals, these seals, this interlude here uh, is, is given just before the uh, seals were open because Christ, as we see, is the 
the theme of this particular chapter to give the uh, the only one that was worthy, if you will, to open up the seals. So it, it bring about it going to open up the seals and they're going to bring about judgment um, upon the the earth and the Gentiles. And remember when we started chapter four that we are no longer going to hear about the church outside. Because uh, we already went through the seven letters that was written to the seven churches of Asia Minor. So then we deal with, with worship. So uh, we're going to stop here uh, as we lay this foundation for chapter 5. And then also we're going to get into uh, chapter 5 because this is such an uh, awesome, awesome chapter to see the Lamb of God climb from uh, under the altar, if you will. And again, I thank you all for uh, tuning in and calling in to our Ring of Power Hour uh, Bible study. Uh, and again, I invite you all to come and worship with us on Sunday morning to where we get to preach the Word of God. And also, uh, we worship uh, at 1164 uh, North Kings Highway. St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. Um, and also, I invite you all on the first and third Monday uh, to call in to our Miracle Monday, which is our prayer uh, conference call to where we believe God for healings and miracles for the life of those who make requests. Because uh, people have been healed over the phone uh, and believe in God. And we have received text messages of people uh, who have been healed uh, during the course of that particular week. And also, uh, everyone, uh, get your book, Discovering God's Gifts to the Church. Uh, it's dealing with the gifts of the Holy Spirit and also the fivefold ministry. It talks about the role of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer and also as being the third personage of the uh, Trinity. Uh, so get your book, westbowpress.com, westbowpress.com, and uh, go into the search window up in the right-hand side, type in the title of the book, Discovering God's Gift to the Church. It comes in softback, hardback, and also it comes in ebook for those who like ebook and you like to uh, read, uh, do your reading electronically and particularly while you're out and about. And again, I thank you all for calling in and tuning in to our Rima Power Hour. Father, we thank you. We praise you. Thank you, O oh God, for all you have done. Lord of God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you look upon everyone, everyone, O oh God, that called in uh, to uh, our Bible study and also tuning in via uh, live.me or Facebook and our Father or in YouTube, I pray in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you will bless them immensely upon this year. Oh God, I just believe in my heart, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that this could be a blessed year for many of those who are in the body of Christ. And yet, oh God, that there can be and will be a blessing unto our ministry. Lord of God, we... Uh, Thank you that they'll be blessed yet in their personal lives. Lord God, we give you glory, we give you praise in the mighty and the majestic name of Jesus. And all the people said, Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Look forward to seeing you on Sunday.